I'm talking with Helen Jane Long at the Green Music Center's Weill Hall. We are sitting here on the stage in this beautiful wooden building. Helen, this is the first time you've been here. What's it like to play here? It's gorgeous. <laughs> it just blows you away. It's so lovely, and it's so different to any other place I've seen before. It's just such an open place. It's, it's fantastic. I love being here. Very nice. Really, really lovely. Let's talk about the music you write. Can you talk about how you approach it? How do you, do you sit down at the piano and see what comes? Yes, a lot of the time I just get, I sit down and I'll just start playing on the piano and I'll just start an idea and then it just kind of flows from there. But uh, yeah, I make a point of having time, which is just writing time. So um, I'm, my mind is in the right place to start with and then um, I'll just sit and see what sort of what happens. Or sometimes that I'll have tunes already in my head and then I'll go to the piano and have to kind of listen to what I'm hearing and then try and find it on the piano and then go that way. That's quite common. That's happened today, actually, whilst I was rehearsing. <laughs> Sat in the other room, just coming up with some new tunes. So, yeah. so you have a tune, and then how? who does the orchestration? I do. I write it all and arrange it all, so it's me, me with me. <laughs> the album Porcelain and the title track really came about from a porcelain face. You can, you can see a porcelain doll, and behind that sad face could be anything the, the expression just doesn't change and I remember seeing a doll and just thinking that was just how many of us are you know we have one face and it doesn't necessarily mean that's how you're feeling whether you're happy and you're hiding the fact that you're not um, and to me that was just a very good way of, of indicating and for me expressing how I felt and and how music and you know, things were to me so it really is about hiding things but just the way that we can you know we we just hide from the world a lot of the things that we feel just protecting ourselves and that to me is a porcelain doll but if you let go of it it just shatters it's very fragile and we all are very fragile we don't necessarily admit it we hide away but um that's that's where that came from very delicate <laughs> very delicate
what about to dust to dust that was another just again a piece where i've just been in a very positive optimistic place and just just felt very open sometimes i have pieces which i've written because you know i struggle sometimes to say how i feel so for me music is a way of it'd be like therapy it's a way of expressing myself without having to need to talk um but to dust was very much just a you know almost like your problems in your hand just get rid of them they're gone you know it's just a very optimistic positive piece Your London players, are is that a group of people that you play with all the time? Um, yeah, I've known them for years as a kind of group of them, which are just you know, excellent players. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're just the best you can get, really. They're just so, and they're so funny as well. That's one thing I love about them. They're amazing musicians, but uh, they're just hilarious. So we've had a six-hour flight from uh, Philadelphia, which has just been laughing. My tummy is just sore from, <laughs> so, for, from giggling and uh, having fun. So, yeah, but they are brilliant players, and they do so much. They're just, you know, just rehearse well and just you know get it right straight away that's got to be a prerequisite for being on the road is to be able to have a good sense of humor and and take things as it comes you need to you you need to get on it's so important because you spend so much time together if you don't it's just an awkward place to be so we're, we do have a lot of fun it's just a lot of giggles and it's just silliness it's very you know but so yeah that's the way i prefer it not too serious <laughs>
uh, for anyone who watches television uh, on the commercial side of things, they may have seen the British Airways commercial that has your piece in it called The Aviators. That's right. So tell, tell me, what happened? How did that come about? Um, I was contacted by a producer who I'd worked for um, before, and she just sent me a message saying that she'd, um, she had a great film and she thought it would be perfect for, for what I write. So she sent over the video and um, saw it and was just highly excited at it because I, I love visuals and I love working to picture. Um, and if I'm writing, for example, my piano albums, in my head I have visual things, so I'm always writing to picture. Um, and then I just started um, doing some piano stuff and doing it to, the, to visuals and then sent it over, and thankfully they... They liked it. So they send you a, a completely cut commercial and then you write? Yeah, nearly. I mean, it's it's pretty much outlined as it's going to be. I mean, sometimes it's not. You might just get very much the, the initial stages and with a voiceover. So for this, it was pretty much um, finished. They had um, voiceover on there. There are a few planes and things that they need to sort of change and, and get that done. But, you know, it gave me the whole storyline to what was happening. So And it, it does help a lot. That or the script. I mean, I don't mind doing it from the script. It, you can kind of do it that way as well. But uh, yeah. What is the storyline? Um, it's the history of aviation. So it shows literally from the original pilots through to present day and how things are and how the changes have been, you know, made with the planes, but how they still have the same, um, you know, good <laughs> standards as they always did. So <laughs> with British Airways. But uh, yeah, it's all about the history of aviation. And it's different to what they've always done because it's always been, you know, commercial adverts selling their flights, but this was beautiful. It was much more of a film project, which is why I loved it, I think, so much.
Let's talk about the music you write. Can you talk about how you approach it? How do you, do you sit down at the piano and see what comes? Yes, a lot of the time I just get, I sit down and I'll just start playing on the piano and I'll just start an idea and then it just kind of flows from there. But uh, yeah, I make a point of having time, which is just writing time. So um, I'm, my mind is in the right place to start with and then um, I'll just sit and see what sort of what happens. Or sometimes that I'll have tunes that are already in my head and then I'll go to the piano and have to kind of listen to what I'm hearing and then try and find it on the piano and then go that way. And that's quite common. That's happened today, actually, whilst I was rehearsing. <laughs> so that's in the other room, just coming up with some new tunes. So, yeah. so you have a tune and then how, who does the orchestration? I do. I write it all and arrange it all. So it's me, me with me. <laughs> but I really enjoy that kind of stuff as well. I like doing all the orchestration and kind of getting stuck into all the scores. So a joy to do. Mm -hmm. 